Capital. Yes, sir. The station is now the ultimate power in the universe. Overview Radio bring you Overview Podcast with me and the chief goes behind the lens. Yeah, man, as always. This is a very special episode, man. Uh, this is a championship episode, you know, because we are joined by... Ice man, like we are joined by champion himself. His name is none other than Ross Brand. The, <laughs> the champ is here, guys. Kalahari <laughs> Ferrari, aka Motswana was <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for having me on the show. It's good yeah. to be here. Yeah, welcome, man. Welcome, 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 welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me on the show. Great to be home. Great to be on your show. And yeah, uh, yeah looking forward to to a great uh, session with you guys. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Ross Branch. Yeah. Kalahari Ferrari. Your nickname. How did that come about? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a it's an awesome story. You know, obviously uh, born and bred in Juaneng and uh, that's home for me. So, you know, going through through the Kalahari Desert was uh, was my home playing grounds and uh, mm-hmm. You know, the desert race was very close to my heart. And when the desert race started going to Chuaneng, um, I started racing it a lot and we had some great success there. So uh, one of the days that I was I was in the middle of the de- the, the bush in the desert uh, at a refuel stop and uh, one of the locals from the area came up to me and he says, oh, you're the Kalahari Ferrari. So I yeah. said, no, 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 I'm, my name is Ross. And he's like, no, no, you're the Kalahari Ferrari because oh, yeah. <laughs> this is the fastest Kalahari Ferrari I've ever seen in the yeah, desert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that just made my made my year, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we, we managed. I came back to the, to the pits into the bivouac and I told my team and, and my family and the name stuck from there and obviously you know being named at home by somebody that's that's grown up and spent so many hundreds of years in the in the middle of the Kalahari Desert that means yeah. something so yeah I'm really proud and really privileged to fly that name and uh, yeah uh, happy to have the, the nickname Kalahari Ferrari interesting yeah, name um, indeed yeah uh, were you born in Joining or Johannesburg I was born in Johannesburg yeah. but I only lived there for two days and yeah, then two I was days, uh, yeah, 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 yeah and in then, um, yeah I um, understand that uh, your parents were Debswana employees by the time um, are they still working for Debswana no you know my dad worked for Debswana for 35 years and then okay. uh, you know unfortunately uh, my mom passed away in 2013 so just before my mom passed away uh, he had to uh, move to Gaborone just for for health benefits and and obviously hospitals and and closer to South Africa um, but yeah you know it was one of those things it was time to move on and uh, I still go back to joining often it's one of my best training grounds and mm. uh, still love it still love uh, you know going back into the middle of the Kalahari and and playing on my bike but uh, yeah it's yeah. Uh, Gaborone is home for me now but uh, yeah it's definitely joining is very very close to my heart yeah um why are your parents really 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 you from like where were they born my dad is south african and my mom was uh, zambian so oh, yeah okay. two two parts of southern africa but uh you know they lived in botswana for for most of their lives uh, oh, okay. they met in johannesburg and then mm. moved to botswana shortly thereafter and uh you know we grew up well they grew up in in Juaneng when there wasn't mm. even tar roads so yeah, yeah. they've been there for a long time and yeah, yeah, uh yeah, yeah. yeah we watched uh we watched everything evolve in in Juaneng and yeah. obviously it was probably the best place that i could have ever asked to have yeah, grown yeah, up yeah. and uh yeah it's yeah. Uh, a beautiful time yeah um was your mom Caucasian as well? Yes, yeah, 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 that's uh-huh. it, you know. Oh, and, like uh, Zambian. Uh-huh. Yeah, Zambian, yeah, Zambian yeah. Uh, lived in Zimbabwe for a while and then started moving south and and then after that into into Bot. Uh-huh. Okay, um, do you, I mean, I mean, like for us here in, unlike South Africa, Zimbabwe, Zambia and like all the other countries, you know, like Namibia as well, Botswana, you know, um, it's um, it's not every day that you see like um, a Caucasian Botswana like you and all that. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder if like you really feel like a Botswana like 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 that. Hundred you know? percent. Uh, you know, this country is is everything to me. Yeah. Um, like I say, all my memories, uh, all the moments that I've had in my lifetime are from Botswana. Yeah, yeah. Um, from the time I was three years old and got on a motorbike, you know, yeah. was in Botswana and and I've represented Botswana for so many years. My first yeah. race was at uh, five years old and I was. Re- uh, racing under the Botswana flag there. So yeah, I've yeah, represented yeah. my whole life and uh, this is home. I'll never go out anywhere else in the world. You know, yeah, this yeah, is, uh, I travel travel a lot and yeah. I, I'm away a lot of the year, but uh, there's no better feeling than climbing an airplane knowing that you're coming home. Yeah. And uh, arriving at home and everybody's so friendly and, you know, just getting back to, to home is, is the yeah. best feeling that I could ever ask for. And it's uh, not only a great feeling for me, but it's so motivating, you yeah, know. You've yeah, got a yeah, whole yeah. country that's behind you that supports yeah. you in everything you do, yeah, yeah, yeah. pushes you as much as you push yourself and uh, everybody follows. You know, racing is, is not the most, uh, you know, known thing in, in Southern Africa yeah, and yeah, uh, the amount of 
of uh, information that uh, you know our country gives out about me racing is absolutely incredible. So mm. it's it's a great honor for me to to raise the the flag, and uh, I just hope I keep making everybody yeah, proud. Yeah, you know, definitely. yeah. <laughs> Say pula, pula. Only one, unfortunately. You know, I travel the world so much, and uh, I never really get to to spend enough time in any country to to learn the language. Mm -hmm. Obviously, everybody asks me if I, I speak Setswana here, yeah, and I understand a little bit. But right, uh, little bit. you know, I need all my friends that are watching now that are listening yeah. to start speaking to me in Setswana yeah, from yeah, the future, yeah. so I can learn. You know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, with uh, my current lifestyle and traveling so much, there's oh. just so much on the go and so much so much pressure and uh, obviously I've just got to be as fit and healthy as I can so yeah. that's the main focus is to carry on winning and as soon as I stop racing then definitely do some lessons yeah um what are the like little Sajana words that you know or hear Oh, you yeah, know yeah. the one thing I, I've always uh, is known is is Pula because oh. that's what I that's what I use overseas and that's what I, I yeah, you know I ha that's how one of the way of describing Botswana is yeah, uh, yeah. you that's know where, that's, that's where the money is as well. It's, it's probably one of the most <laughs> famous words that we all know, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and it means something, you know. It's not only our currency, but it means rain. And uh, you know, explaining that to somebody that yeah, doesn't yeah, know yeah. where where we're from, you know, people don't really know Botswana from from the other side of the the world. So explaining it, it has a, a big big uh, pride in my heart you know yeah, and yeah. it's uh yeah i'll be uh blue black and white forever that's for sure yeah see king camerado <laughs> king camerado <laughs> <laughs> You know what that means? No. <laughs> I smell you <urine>. real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Um, tell us about your family background and lifestyle and all that. I mean, we'd like to assume that, you know, um, in the country, like when your parents are working in Debsana and all that, I mean, it's still, like that's a big thing. I mean, uh, like um, what economic structure was the household like when you were growing up? And all yeah, that? you know, it's, uh, we had a we had amazing upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I lived outside. I lived on my motorbike or I lived on my bicycle, and it was yeah. so safe in Joining. We could ride a clock around two o'clock in the morning on our bicycles. You know, it was it was amazing. And uh, my parents my parents worked really hard. My dad worked two jobs. You know, just to to mm -hmm. fund my racing to make sure I could live my dreams. My mom worked a job on the side and and took me training every day and. Uh, you know, we had a household that was all in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I said from the time I was five years old that I want to be a world champion. And uh, mm -hmm. my parents took that to heart and they went all in for me from the time I was five. There's not many kids at five years old that know what they want to yeah, do. Yeah, and yeah. I had that, uh, that ambition, that goal, that stride to get there. And uh, they went all in and uh, they did everything they could. You know, uh, my dad had to work two jobs. And then on a, on a Friday night, we had to leave joining late, make the border post, go race in Cape Town. You know, we'd drive through the night, get to right, Cape Town just in time mm -hmm. for the start of the race on Saturday. And then I'd race the whole day Saturday. And then we'd get in the car and drive straight back to joining. So yeah. he'd do it on no sleep and, and be back in time to work overtime and, and everything on Sunday night. So... Yeah, we had a, it was hectic, you know, but um, nothing that any of us ever regretted, nothing mm. that we didn't enjoy doing. It was a family adventure, you know, we took the whole family, my dad, my mom and my sister went everywhere with us. We went racing around the whole Southern Africa. We traveled Namibia, Zimbabwe, Zambia, South Africa, all the way up to Kenya. And it's it's been absolutely incredible that I can say that I've spent the most quality time with my family that not many people get to do, yeah. um, you know. And uh, of course, we've had our ups and downs, um, you know, we're when, when you don't ride well and uh, as an athlete mm. you don't get the results that you're looking for and that your parents have put all the effort into so then it gets a little bit frustrating on my point of view because uh, you know they put everything they have into me and I'm not giving back what they deserve so yeah it's, um, it is like that that's mm. racing and that's any sport unfortunately I'm sure it's the same in athletics and football and any other yeah, sport yeah, that yeah, you yeah. do you know you're not going to always win but uh, you just got to make sure that you give your best best you possibly can and uh, yeah at the end of the day um my family is, is incredible. Up to mm -hmm. today, you know, we're the closest family you could ever imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we speak to each other every single day. And, mm. uh, yeah, um, it's it's really, really cool lifestyle. And, uh, you know, I think that's why Botswana is also so close to our hearts is because my dad moved there when he was, you know, still a young man. And, mm. and my mom and him made so many memories. Obviously, both my sister and I uh, were, were in joining all the time. And uh, we grew up as a family there. And uh, for most of our lives, you know, that's all we've known. We haven't known any other home. We haven't known any other house. We haven't known anything else except uh, Botswana joining in particular. So, yeah, yeah I think um, 
yeah, it's been been an incredible life, that's for sure. Yeah, um, you say your uh, your dad worked uh, two jobs. Uh, which are those jobs? He had a bicycle shop in uh, in Joanning oh, and okay. selling and maintaining bicycles, fixing motorbikes and everything. And then also worked at uh, at uh, Debswana on the mine. So as what? As a recrash technician, so a computer okay. engineer, uh-huh. and then uh, yeah, uh, you know, so it was a really interesting time, and uh-huh. uh, you know, funny enough, he'd been here for thirty-five years, and the only reason he had to leave Botswana is because he didn't get his permits renewed. So, <laughs> so it's a uh, bit of a strange situation. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm a Botswana, and he had to leave the country, but <laughs> oh yeah, yeah so you know, he's not a Botswana. He's not a Botswana. He's oh. uh, he was a, a resident. So yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, but like I say, he still comes and visits all the time, and mm. uh, yeah, we still this is home for all of us. Your sister? Um, how she, old is your sister? She's uh, thirty nine now, and uh, oh, no, she's, she's older than you. Yeah, she's like older a year than me. Older. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah, you know, I was the young one and uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the naughty one, yeah, yeah. and uh, she lives in Germany now actually, and uh, okay. runs a race team as well. So you know, we're still all in racing, and we're still still all involved in motorsport, which is which is incredible. You know, yeah, what's yeah, it yeah. now right. going on? On 40 years of, of being involved in motorsport <laughs> yeah, is, yeah, is yeah, absolutely yeah. amazing. My dad was the president of Botswana Motorsport at a stage. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think uh, motorsport is close to our hearts and, and will be involved forever. You know, obviously the day that comes that I retire and hang up the boots, I still want to give back as much as I possibly can, give yeah. back to the country, give back to the sport and uh, just enjoy what, uh, you know, started out as, as a hobby, just going out to the track and, and having a fire and, and going to, to run some laps and, and keep training. But, um, yeah. We'll see. Hopefully, there's a few more years left in me before we get to that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> which schools did you go to? Uh, like I went to Acacia, you know, Acacia Primary School in Joining. I grew up there and uh, went there until high school. At high school stage, uh, funny situation. I didn't want to go to boarding school, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I had to go to South Africa to go to school. Okay. I only stayed in, in boarding school for a year, uh, really didn't enjoy it and uh, the school wasn't focused on, on my goals, goals and beliefs. Mm. So, I, you know, I, I quit school and I started homeschooling back in joining again oh, okay. and uh, did my training and focused on my career as becoming a motorsport athlete. And then I flew overseas to Germany okay. and I lived in Germany for eight years. You know, oh, at the age okay. of 15, I left uh, Botswana and went to live in Germany. Mm-hmm. Like for eight years? Yeah, I li- lived there for eight years and, and raced as a, as a, that was my first professional job as a as a racer mm-hmm. and uh did well you know it was it was really cool to to go and race overseas um unfortunately i had to leave my family behind you know my dad had to stay and work and my mom had to stay at home and uh yeah i went overseas by myself at 15 and it was it was a big step a scary step for me and my family and uh but it was one that paid off for sure yeah um before we go to germany tell us about joining you know, yeah, J-Town. Yeah, like as they <laughs> call it and all that. Um, how was joining, I mean, like growing up and all that, you know, um, for you it's a place that you call home and all that, you know, yeah, like for most of us it's a mining town and all that, you know. Do you yeah. know a place called Somerset at that side? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know Somerset. No, I don't know Somerset. What about, what about Summer Pilage? <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, growing up in Joining was was amazing. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the school sports were were incredible. Uh-huh. The school itself believed in racing as well, so they okay. supported me and backed me in everything that uh-huh. I did, yeah. even as a youngster. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, everybody there believed in me. Every mm-hmm. single person in Joining believed in in me going mm-hmm. to to race in the world championships one day. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, a mining town is is really difficult to get into as a person. But mm-hmm. you know, I was I was obviously you know bought up there so everybody knew what I was about what oh, I like okay. doing and oh, yeah. and the mind supported me flat out in my racing and they helped That's build us a motocross track and a training yeah. track and everything like that for so you. Well, for everybody, for the community, oh, yeah. you know, but yeah, I was yeah. heavily involved because obviously it benefited me a lot. And yeah, uh, yeah I, would, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, yeah, I loved yeah. every second of it. Uh, and obviously my wife is also from there. We met each other when we were four years old. Yeah, so yeah. we grew up together. It yeah, was, yeah. Uh, you know, a, a love story that nobody can ever believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I wouldn't change it for, for the world. Uh, the, the upbringing we had as kids, we still a- were able to have as much fun as we could. And um, everything was pretty relaxed, you know, yeah. so... Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And, and obviously, as an athlete, you've got to focus on your riding career and, and training and getting fit and making sure that you're not out at a party until all hours of the morning mm-hmm. as, a, as a youngster, which everybody does. Yeah. Um, so joining helped, you know, keep my head because I know I needed to go training on a Saturday morning. So there was no late Friday nights and a, and a Sunday again. So, yeah, for, for us in joining, it was, it was really the best place that I could focus on my career. Yeah, like, were you part of the joining community? I mean... Like um, as a white guy and all that, you know, yeah, like the other blacks and all that. Um, how were you able to, yeah, like to measure them, you know, like to be part of the community and all that? 
Yeah, for sure. You know, uh, for for us as a family and for me myself, there's mm. there's no difference between black and white. We're all the same people. Mm. I got on with everybody. Some of my best friends are black guys, and sure and is. yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's uh, um, I'm part of the culture. There's mm. there's no changing that just because of my skin color. It doesn't make me any different from anybody else. Mm. Uh, we grew up in schools together. You know, we we did everything together. Um, and yeah, that's I think for for us in Juaneng, that was mm. that was the norm. You know, we don't differentiate between blue black or white you know yeah, it's yeah. just uh, everybody's the same we all mm. got grew up, grew up in the same place we all did the same school sports we all did the same stuff after school we, we all hung out together we all went riding the motocross track together we all went riding our bicycles at night together yeah. so really there was no color difference between us and yeah. uh, growing up there everything was normal mm. um, you know it wasn't uh, anything to do with, with color in joining yeah. and, and that was really, really cool. And um, yeah, I'm just uh, really happy about that. You know? Yeah, and so I'm um, like, um, you never really known racism like your, like your entire life? Never, my mm -hmm. entire life, you know, I've never understood it. I've mm -hmm. never really wanted to get involved in it. Yeah. Um, for me, uh, it's exactly the same. We're all the same people. We mm -hmm. all want the same goals. Everybody wants to succeed. It doesn't matter what you succeed in. If you're going to be a, a multi-billionaire businessman, if you're going to be a guy that's going to be a swimmer, if you're going to be a motorbike rider if you're going to be a skydiver you know uh, an airplane pilot we all want to succeed and we're all going to yeah. try our best to succeed it doesn't yeah, matter yeah. what color we are that that's got absolutely nothing to do with it so yeah i've uh, i've been lucky and fortunate enough never have to, to worry about that and yeah. and like i say some of my best friends are of color yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. you know that's really special to me what about white privilege um i bet that one you've benefited a lot from like the white privilege no, no, definitely not. Eh? No. Because like um, one thing with um, Africans is that, you know, uh, um, when, 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 when um, a white comes along, you know, they have this thing of um, giving them, you know, yeah, like some sort of a peristool and all that, you know, special treatments and all that. What about you? Like, um, have you enjoyed that, like around the country and all that? No, nah, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody's treated us fairly. Um, everything, you know, everything in my sport is you put your helmet on and you're the same person. Yeah. So, you know, you've got to go and give it your best. Mm -hmm. If I'm better than you, then well done. I'm going to get a sponsor before you get a sponsor. If you're better than me, you deserve the sponsor and you're going to get it before me. That's how it is. And it's uh, it's like a football match, you know. If, uh, if uh, side A is going to beat side B, they deserve to win and uh, mm -hmm. they get the benefits. Yeah. And uh, side B wins, then unlucky, you know. You're gonna, yeah, they're going to yeah. get the benefits. So, absolutely not. And yeah. uh, I don't believe in that stuff at all. Yeah. Um, um, nothing from my side, you know. I've worked yeah. really hard to where I've got. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Most beautiful thing about joining, like just one word. The bush. The bush. The bush. Okay. I leave my house on my motorbike. I can do 500 kilometers through the bush. Nobody, see nobody. Just go into absolute heaven. When it comes to motorbike riding, that's what you want to do. You want to put your helmet on. You know, uh, I even knew the cops so well I could ride on the main road yeah. until I got out of town. And uh, everyone would be like, yeah, you're going training. Good on you. Good job. And, yeah, yeah. and then I was in the bush for hours and hours and hours and and you can ride so far and you know and uh i think that's just the beauty of it and and if you go three kilometers from your house you're in the in the middle of the bush you can watch some of our most incredible sunset that botswana has to offer mm -hmm. in joining and uh, you sit there by yourself and you just think to yourself what uh, what else do you need you mm -hmm. know you've got your friends you've got your family you've got beautiful bush around you you've got some beautiful surroundings you're with mother nature you've got the most incredible sunsets yeah you know things are so peaceful especially yeah, yeah. Uh, in today's age you know there's so much war and everybody there's so much hatred yeah, yeah, yeah. I often go to Juaneng on a, on a ride and I go do a thousand five hundred k's in a weekend and I, I often just stay extra night just to say and just to to admire the peace that we still have in Botswana you yeah, know yeah. Uh, there's not many countries in the world and uh, I think every, as we've recently seen with the handover that we are one of the most peaceful nations in the world exactly. and and uh, I'm so proud to be a part of that nation I'm so proud to to hold that passport and, and travel the world and say hey did you guys see our handover it was so peaceful and uh, <laughs> wait until you come and see the, the bush of Botswana yeah, you're yeah. going to love it and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody that I've uh, you know got to come and visit our country they've yeah. loved it and they have been returning ever since so yeah, yeah it's uh, definitely the bush of Botswana um, I understand that um, someday in 1991 if I'm not mistaken but yeah like you are five five years old by the time uh, your family took you to um, <laughs> the desert race in Cape Town and all that yeah like that's when you like you got to 
fall in love with motor racing and all that. Is it so? Yeah, you know, it was. Uh, I was already in love with motor racing because I've mm. been riding since such a young age, and mm. it was when we were six years old in 1992. We Born went to two. the the Perry Le Cap, so that's the the current uh, Dakar rally that I compete yeah, in, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. it was racing from Paris to Cape Town, which is humongous miles. You know, that's really really far, and uh, my dad drove me there. It was 3,000 kilometers to Paris get there. to Cape Town. Yeah, they raced Tell from Paris to goes. Cape Town. I'm like, um, how do they do it? Like the Paris to Cape Town thing. Like, so they it was only once off because it was such a long race. They okay. they start riding in Paris and uh -huh. they start. So there's obviously three categories: bikes, cars, and trucks. Okay. They started in in Paris uh -huh. on the first of January, yeah. and then they ended in Cape Town. So the yeah. race was how from Paris to Cape like, Town. Um, like the sea and all that through. Yeah, they they carry a ferry just oh, on ferry. the just okay. across from. Um, uh, France across to to Morocco, uh -huh. and then they raced the whole of Africa. They oh, raced okay. down to Africa. Yeah, it was uh, small, it was in insane, you yeah. know. And we went to go watch them come through the top end of Namibia, and uh, you know, as you can imagine, they've ridden already from Paris to to the edge of Namibia, and everybody was so tired, and it was just like. You know, it was something that just to finish the race is going to be such a huge accomplishment. Mm. So I looked at these guys and I looked at some of my, my heroes there and I was like, wow, I want to just finish that race one day. Yeah. Never mind going to race and try and get in the podium, but I want to be there and I want to be a part of this adventure. Yeah. And uh, from then, uh, you know, obviously the, the paths changed a little bit. I wanted to race motocross. I wanted mm. to race off-road racing. Mm. wanted to race our current Desert race, which is, which is my main goal. And uh, yeah, it started shifting towards that. And then uh, the dream came alive again yeah. and uh, yeah then we headed over to Dakar in 2019 when did you turn pro I turned semi-pro when I was 15 years old uh, like when I went to Germany, to Germany. okay and uh, you know there I was racing I didn't have a job I was uh, getting paid to race then and uh, not very much but I could live there and I could mm could stay there and keep on participating yeah. and just gaining experience and yeah. learning about how everything works out and uh, yeah it was it was um, a lot of fun yeah. and uh, you know such a young age trying to trying to balance life at that age it was really tough um, yeah. you know you got some money and and you know the first thing you want to do as a kid is go and buy your favorite computer game or you want to go yeah, buy this yeah, or you want to yeah, go buy yeah, that yeah, and yeah. and normally your parents are there to say hey stop you're not going to do that you've got to save your money for this and my parents weren't there you know and uh, at that time there was no whatsapp there was no yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing I could call them once a week on a, on a world call card and I could yeah. speak to them for 15 minutes you know yeah, so it was it. Mm -hmm. it was hectic and yeah. I had to kind of like juggle okay this is the lifestyle you've chosen mm. but it's a really tough lifestyle and uh you know you yeah. speak to to your friends that are in boarding school and they're having a good time and they're traveling and they're doing this and they're going to family holidays and i missed out on all that kind of stuff so yeah. yeah it was um it was it was a hard uh you know transition to make yeah, into yeah. a professional but uh i was really glad i did it, it made me grow up really quickly mm. but uh Glad I did it. Um, who were you staying with in Germany? I live by myself, on, uh -huh. in a flat by myself, you know. And, like at 15? Uh, at 15, yeah. Never, why? Cooked, uh, why? never cooked my own meal. And, uh, you know, there you have to do everything yourself. You've got no one to help you as a, as a youngster, you know. Mm. There's no mom or dad to, to clean up after you or to do yeah. this or to cook your food or breakfast or anything like that. And uh, the team put me in, a, in, a, in an apartment and said, this is the writer's apartment. I was by myself for the first uh, two years and then we got a teammate. So yeah, it was uh, 22 kilometers to the workshop. I'll never forget. He like gave me a bicycle. I was obviously too young to drive a car. Mm -hmm. And I rode my bicycle every day, 22 k's to the <laughs> workshop. Mm. Did some work on the bike and had to do with the team stuff. And then rode 22 k's home at night. Like which city is this? Uh, it was in Germany. It was in a place called Saarbrücken, south of Germany. Oh, okay. Like yeah. is that a city or a town? It's a small little it? town. You know, oh, okay, there was only yeah. like six or 7,000 people out of there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Why did you, like, um, what was your main reason uh, to move to Germany? Like was it... I wanted to turn professional and unfortunately oh, okay. in Southern Africa, you, you won't get paid um, enough to, to even continue racing, you know. Oh, so, so like you basically went to Germany so that you can become... Yeah, cool. yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah, there was a team okay, that offered okay. me a job and they uh -huh. said, okay, you've got three months to test yourself. Mm -hmm. Come over to Germany. This is your salary. We're going to pay you. You're going to live there for three months, a tryout period. If you stay the three months, then we'll get you a one-year visa and your, your contract will go on that visa. So if you keep yeah. on getting your visa renewed and you're good enough, then your contract will be oh, okay. up for that. So, okay. yeah. Is Women, women, or Botswana women? <laughs> That's a hard one considering I've known my wife my entire life, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. <laughs> it's putting you on the spot. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throwing you under the bus. Yeah. Throwing you under the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so, like, um, who, uh, um, who are your um, role models like when you were? 
definitely my dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. somebody that puts so much work and effort into somebody else mm. is somebody that I take my hat off and, and uh, pour my absolute heart out to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, till today, my dad is my biggest supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave me everything he did. He didn't spend one extra cent on himself. You know, mm. if it was buying a bicycle, it was buying a bicycle for Ross to go training. If it was going on a family holiday, it was a family holiday that included a race so we mm. could go and race for Ross. Mm. If it was, oh, we need to take a December off, we couldn't take a December off, we wouldn't have the money to go on a family holiday mm. in December. So we'd go training in Gaborone. You know, it was... Uh, it was something that he put his entire life into. Mm. And uh, so he's my, mo- my role model by mm. far. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what championship you win. At the end of the day, mm. if you can do that for your kids, then I think you're the yeah. best father that anyone could ask for. Shout out to Yeah, shout out, shout out, man. Would you say that um, uh, like he's your destiny helper? For sure. You yeah. know, I think uh, we all put on this earth for a reason. And uh, for sure, he was definitely put on this earth to to guide me. And I think that's yeah. exactly what he did. Uh, that's interesting, man. You see, um, we always have this conversation on the podcast you know um talking of how important fathers are to like to children you know uh whether male or female and all that so um like i see that you can attest it definitely yeah. um you know i think uh first of all becoming a father luckily yeah. enough uh, i still don't have kids yeah. but uh becoming a father is a huge step i think yeah, yeah. um you know and and then to to become a father and then provide for your kids like yeah. He provided for me and my sister, you know, mm. everything was also about her as well. And uh, he just did everything in his power that we could have the best possible life that we could have. Um, you know, we didn't have much money growing up. We didn't have, uh, you know, pocket money to buy the things we wanted because we both understood, myself and my sister understood that it's going to a cause that will help us later on in life and yeah. uh, that we wanted to become what we did and and my sister was also involved in racing she rode for a little while until it got a bit expensive and then she started doing the the organization of races and stuff mm-hmm. so she was also involved in it and and um yeah so you know we had to skip out on those opportunities and yeah. um it wasn't because my dad wasn't providing it was because he was over providing for us for what we wanted to do and yeah. and our future and like you say our destinies of, of what we're going to become and you know i think being put on this earth the only thing you want to leave is a legacy true, 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 uh, you know true, true. it doesn't matter yeah. what happens after that if you leave, leave a legacy and i know for a fact that my dad's gonna leave a, leave a legacy and uh you know it doesn't matter now that i'm a world champion or whatever race i win it's going to be really hard to fulfill that legacy is yeah. because it's so big um but you know i'm i'm also gonna try and leave my own legacy that yeah. could also improve the lives of other people and uh yeah i'm just really grateful for both my parents my mom and my dad um they did everything for me and yeah, um, you know, I think it's a it's a life we chose. It's an exciting life. Like I said, my dad still to today travels yeah. around the world to go and watch me race, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. really special. Yeah, shout out to Pops, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, where does let's talk about Amy? Um, where does she come in now? I mean, you mentioned that you met uh, like when you were four years old. Yeah, I understand that uh, like you guys got married in 2017 and all that. But uh, you went to Germany when you were 15 and then you had to come back. Like, where does she fit in to the picture now? She's my life. Um, uh, to tell you the honest truth, you know, we've, we've known each other since we're four years old. Tell us about yeah. that. Yeah, like the uh, genesis of it. We grew up in, in Joining. Uh, uh, her were mom. Were neighbors? We were like, four or five houses okay, apart. Okay, living next door to Alice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I walked past there and I kept on looking out and I was like, hey, <laughs> what's going on? Like, hey, you know, and uh, her yeah. mom was my primary school teacher. Oh. So it's like, a, it's a whole big, uh, okay. big circle, you know, yeah, and yeah, yeah. up until really recently, I was still calling her mom Mrs. Crew Brown, you know, because yeah. it was that level of respect. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, we grew up together. Obviously, we had our ups and downs, you know, yeah. we're so young, we didn't know what love was at that age uh-huh. and, and, and everything. We started becoming teenagers and, uh, we were best friends. Uh-huh. Uh, we always went out with each other in Juaneng and we went into the middle of the bush. We went to the motocross track. We did a lot of training together. Yeah. We did everything together and not only with Amy but with her entire family, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and uh, yeah, you know, then uh, obviously the the ball dropped that I I need to make a move, yeah. and uh, <laughs> uh, you know, obviously it was really hard the first couple of years because I was living in Germany and she was living at home, and she's a she's an extremely career focused person. Oh, okay. What so, does she do? Uh, she's a marketing manager. Oh, okay. So she had her own marketing company now, but at the time she was studying and she was at school and she was, you know, she had her own goals and dreams, and and yeah. she was a very very big athlete herself and swimming yeah. in Marco uh, water polo is, was huge. So for, 
for us it was it was the perfect relationship you know mm. we motivated each other we sometimes wanted to kill each other because <laughs> we're so so competitive uh, we could never ever play board games on the same team that's for sure um, oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah you know yeah, growing yeah. up with somebody they know everything about you yeah, and yeah, yeah. I know everything about her and uh, yeah. you know it's um, probably the best thing I could have asked for and yeah. you know me traveling the world obviously there's that there's that there's that risk you know you meet so many other girls and so many other ladies but yeah, 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 yeah. the thing was as I was in love with a, a small little chick from Joining, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah, nothing yeah. was ever going to change Mother that. Lynn. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. it was, you know, she's been my rock. Um, my career hasn't been the easiest, you yeah, know, yeah. far from easy. And, uh, you know, this these past couple of years have, have gone a little bit better, not easier, but better. Yeah. And, uh, you know, through the bad times when I wanted to hang up the boots and, and call it quits and just go and, you know, go to a, a nine to five and, and work just as a, as a everyday, mm. everyday guy going into an office. Well, like you've had that. No, I haven't had it. You know, I wanted no, to I do mean, it like at a stage, the, but I wanted to yeah, hang like up the boots. Yeah, yeah, the for and sure. All that. Uh, more than once. Mm -hmm. You know, with with our sport, you're only as good as your last race. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when you when you win in racing, everybody loves you, and you're on top. And the sponsors and all your partners is it's all so easy to to maintain that that uh, you know that that focus and motivation. But you know, with our sport, you're riding 160 k's an hour through the desert. Mm. One rock. You know, you hit it badly and you end up breaking an arm. Yeah. That's six weeks of no racing, no training, nothing. So yeah. you have nothing to to work on, you know. And, um, you know, unfortunately, the show must go on. Mm. And there's going to be somebody else that's better, that's yeah, healthier, yeah, that's yeah, fitter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you, you've you got to make sure that, uh, you know, when you do get injured, you've got to stay so mentally strong. Mm. And if you have the wrong people around you or if you don't have somebody there to support you through those times, then you'll never make it as an athlete. It doesn't matter what sport you're in. Um, yeah, but for you, fortunately, so, your family was then Amy was there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, she yeah. kept me going. Uh, hardcore sometimes, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. like uh, one race I finished third and she's like, what are you doing finishing third? We're not yet to finish third. You know, we've put our whole <laughs> life in this. We need to be at the front, yeah. and uh, you know we still joke about that race, and it's and that's the reason now I've been able to win a championship. Now it's you know, I tell everybody that I do the fun part. I yeah. get on and I go and yeah. I race my motorbike, and everybody's seeing Ross on the TV, and it's like yeah, hey, yeah, uh, this. But there's an army of people behind me, yeah, and, you and I've got yeah, the right yeah, people. Yeah. I've got the you know the, the people that believe in me, that love me, that mm. are through me through good races, bad races, up races, down races, whatever yeah. we go through, yeah. we go through it as a team, and and those are the people that I owe everything to, yeah. and uh, I'll never forget that, never yeah. in my entire life. You know, um, like I say, we all work hard, but uh, they they work so hard as well just to keep me in the state that I need to be in. It's uh, yeah. we all humans, we all easy get uh, distracted and want to go here, want to go there. Yeah, you know and it's yeah, like yeah, okay yeah. cool maybe i don't want to do this maybe i do want to do this and they just keep me focused and and they know that uh reaching this goal that we reached a couple of weeks ago was a lifelong dream yeah, and yeah. um yeah they i owe it to them for sure yeah so um when did you and amy became an item yeah officially i don't know as long as her mom doesn't see this then i think <laughs> I we can say the truth <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, we officially got together when she was 16, I was 18. Oh, and uh, okay. yeah, you know, it was, uh, it was a very, very strange relationship because although we were together, we we're still best friends. You know, yeah. it wasn't anything else. The only, the only difference was is that I could call her babe. You know, that was yeah. the only thing. And it was, it was like, um, you know, uh, it was, it was yeah. actually a, a lifelong dream. Yeah. Was you know, she your first? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, like and I was her first. Yeah, serious? it was. That's how long ah, we've been like, together. You know, it's like, like yeah, yeah. So, so, like, you've never been with anyone else. I had a girlfriend before that, like, oh, uh, for okay. a little while, but it was like, you know, it was really. I was really young, and it oh, was okay. Yeah, like yeah. there was nothing there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so yeah. like Amy was your. If first. you want to call it, it's the first person I've been in in love with. So Amy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Do you, do you think that you'd like to ask him like, <laughs> <laughs> on that matter? No, no. I just want to ask him about his spot. <laughs> 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 okay, no, interesting. So, um, you guys have been together for how long now? Uh, yes, like, uh, probably like, what's it, 22 years? 22 Somewhere. years. I'm 38 now. Yeah, 38. So, right. oh, yeah, like since you were 18, yeah. yeah, 22 20, years. 20 years, yeah, yeah. 20 years. So, so, like, you guys have been together ever since, like, you've never broken up or not, or never anything. broken up. So, like, not everyone's. No, no, wow. we've. 
you know, I, I had a really big crash in 2011. Mm. Um, I knocked myself out and I lost six months of my life. Mm -hmm. Jesus and Christ. there was a, a little bit of a, you know, it was probably one of the harder parts of our relationship just because I had no memory of what we were. Oh, and, uh, you know, I had to relearn that and, and relearn how, how we were with each other. Mm. And uh, that was probably one of the only points in our, in our relationship that was actually like, this is strange. Mm -hmm. Everything else has been like clockwork. Obviously, everybody has the odd arguments and the argy bargy, but mm. uh, you know, I think um, her putting up with me in my mental state when I'm racing is uh, she needs more than a gold medal. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, as, yeah. A, as an athlete, you, you lose your mind sometimes yeah, and it's, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's not a right. bad thing. Yeah. You know, you're just so focused on winning yeah. and you're so focused on the goal ahead. Sometimes you put that goal in front of everything else yeah, and yeah. Um, not many ladies, women, sisters, moms, dads will ever put up with that. You yes. know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it's really yeah. hard to explain, you know, like but creatives in general, for yeah, yeah. sure. You know, you have to uh, living with an athlete must be must be exhausting yeah, because yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I win a race, I come home, I'm so happy, I'm on top of the world. I go yeah. training, I do this. We we live a life of of happiness, and and you know we go to dinners and we do this and we do that. And the next weekend, I can go and lose a race, and I'm a completely opposite person. Mm -hmm. You know, I train even harder, so I'm grumpy. And then I go, you know, we don't go out, mm -hmm. we because I don't deserve to go out because yeah. we we haven't got our a goal yeah. and uh, then I come home I'm grumpy because I haven't won now I'm losing a championship why am I losing a championship oh no I'm not good enough okay yeah. she needs to try and change that around I wake up two o'clock in the morning you know doubting myself writing things down oh why why did what was different between last weekend and this weekend why did it change write it down okay I need to work on this I need to work on that she's awake from two o'clock in the morning mm. I go back to sleep at three o'clock she's thinking okay how can she help fix me yeah. so in general you know I think that goal that we set, nobody really understands what goes into it as a couple. Yeah. Because, man, I, I don't know if I would have been able to do the same, you know. Yeah, yeah, if she yeah. was in that position, I think yeah, I would have yeah, uh, yeah. I would have called it quits a while back. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, um, we both have the same goal. And I think that's why the only argy bargies or the arguments that we actually have is about racing. And it's about mm -hmm. work ethic because yeah. she knows what I can do. She knows what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And when I don't produce that or when I don't work hard enough to produce that, she can see that. So I think it's... It's a, it's really, it's just a, it's just a, you know, tap on the back to say, hey, wake up. You need to, mm -hmm. we need to change what we're doing or we need to work a bit harder. We need to work a bit easier. We need to calm down on the working mm -hmm. a little bit because, you know, we work our entire lives day and night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, hasn't your career maybe like in a way negatively um, um, affected uh, like your relationship and all that? Definitely not. Um, you know, she's the she's the first person I wake up thinking about, the last person I think about when I go to sleep. Yeah. Um, and I'm the same with her. Yeah. So, you know, and although I travel a lot, yeah. you know, that we have so much trust with each other that it's that it's so nice. And she knows that I need her at the end of each race day. Every single day that I'm away, I phone her or I speak to her on WhatsApp every single day without a yeah. doubt. Yeah. And uh, when we're home, you know, we spend every minute of the day together. Yeah. So it's it's like our relationship is so strong yeah. and we've got such a strong bond because of that you know we're not out every weekend at a, at a braai or this or that we're spending time with each other whether yeah. it's playing golf or whether it's going driving into the bush yeah. or going to Bacar Dam and sitting on the side of the water while our dogs run around so yeah, yeah you know I don't think there's any negativity I think it's hard yeah, for yeah, sure yeah, yeah. Uh, more from her side than my side because you know she's got to put up with so much as I said yeah. but um, definitely not negative I think if anything it's made our relationship so strong yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like concrete you know you yeah. want to concrete it gets stronger every day yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah and uh, yeah, yeah. we've been watching this concrete since we we're 16 years old yeah ever so this concrete is now ppc has nothing on this <laughs> yeah. concrete, you know? <laughs> but Ross, i just want to take you yeah. back a little bit like you were talking about you got knocked off and like she had to step in and like some sort of, like comfort you in a way like what what happened there like yeah, you know, it's, um, that injury. you know, when you're going through an injury, it's uh, as an athlete or especially as a motocross rider, mm -hmm. you know, that injury takes you out of the game completely. You know, it's not like you can still go to a race and show face and, and still let everybody know that you're still in the game. Mm. You know, as soon as you break an arm, you're out. Everybody forgets about you. you the, 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 the show must go on. So mm. the next weekend, somebody else takes your place because your bike is obviously there. It needs to be ridden. People are going to jump in and they're going to be called a replacement rider. And, you know, as much as we don't want it, that replacement rider can sometimes be better than you. Mm. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, then your job is gone. You know, um, yeah. 
everybody looks at it as an athlete and be like, wow, it's such an amazing job, but we've only got one year mm. to prove what we've got. Yeah. And if for some reason you've got an injury that takes you out, you know, like for us, one of our scariest things is a broken femur. It's six months recovery time at the least. Mm. It's one year at the most. We've only got a year contract. So if you break your femur in January, that's half your year gone. How do you have enough time to prove to, prove to the team that you got the results, you got mm. the speed, you can carry on, you're doing the, you know, at the end of the day, it's just a marketing, it's a marketing tool. We marketing tools for our company, for our brand. We mm. brand ambassadors. Mm. We're trying to sell the brand. So if we get injured, you know, it's really, really hard to, to stay focused and to stay, okay, hey, I need to get fit. How am I going to get fit? I've got a broken leg. I can't walk around. Okay, you can still go to the gym. You can still keep your upper body. You know, it's like really hard to, to try and draw that line. And, and as soon as your, your fitness doesn't come back as quickly as you're hoping, mm. that's when the mentality kicks in that you're not good enough. Mm. You know, and then, you, then you're your own worst enemy. So you need that person around to say, okay, and, and I must say with Amy, she can see it coming a mile away. You know, she doesn't even let me get to that, that point where we say, oh no. You know, mm. she's like, hey, I can see this. We need to go away. So yeah. we'll go, you know, even if we go to Juaneng and we go spend, uh, you know, time with, with long, long family time friends of ours, mm. we'll go sit there for a couple of days and, you know, it just keeps your mind interactive. It keeps you doing things. And then you come back and you start again and you start the rebuilding process. So I think for that, you know, and uh, one of my biggest crashes, like I said, in 2011, mm. uh, I hit my head so hard. I had a, a mild amnesia and it, mm. it lost six months of my life. My best yes. friend had passed away in a, in a motorbike accident. And when I woke up from the crash, I was asking for him, mm. you know, so... There's so much that goes into to recovering from a crash like that. And, and obviously, as a person, the first thing you do, you're naturally mm. scared to go into that place. Mm. So I woke up thinking, what had happened? How do I not remember that? And then I, it was time to come back onto a bike. And I was so slow because I didn't want the same thing to happen. I didn't know, I didn't know how I crashed. Yeah. I don't know why I crashed. You know, so it was like, what if it happens again? Mm. What if it does this? What if I do that? What happens if I knock myself out for longer? Mm. Um, so they need to be there to bring you out of that out of that hole mm. and uh yeah with 2011 you know we went through hell we went through hell and back and uh yeah luckily enough she was there and you know she she bought me out of it and and my whole entire family was there you know it was uh we, we started doing the small things mm. uh one of my favorite things was to go to spur you know and to spur, uh, to spur. and we used to go have dinner at spur oh yeah to eat yeah, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. And, and just go for a dinner because we used to just enjoy the vibe and the noise of spur and everything like that and and then that's how we started getting back into normal life you know uh -huh. we'd go to spur on a wednesday oh, okay cool this yeah hey, then all the memories start coming back uh -huh. all the fun times start coming back get on a bike i was only allowed to ride for an hour and every week mm. so i'd only ride an hour and i'd start wanting it and like getting oh hey i need mm. that feeling back again yeah. Yeah. The rush let's go again. for it let's yeah, go for it rush, and then yeah. it starts getting better yeah. and better and better and uh yeah, that's um, that's racing. Yeah, yeah. Do you crave it? Like the rush, like the adrenaline rush and the risk and... If I can tell you the truth, it's worse than drugs. Serious? I've never done drugs. I've never tried <laughs> drugs. <laughs> yeah. But it's like a, a drug that you want so badly that you want to do it every day. Uh. And, you know, like me sitting here... I just want to go ride my bike. Yeah. And as you saw, I came in on a scooter. Yeah. Right. And uh, that's what I do every day. You know, yeah. I've got a car at home, but I ride my scooter every day because yeah. it's the it's not the rush of 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 what the bike is bringing or the adrenaline. It's that freedom. It's that that time for you to think. It's like, okay, hey, listen, this mm. is this is this is amazing. You've got yeah. the wind blowing. You've got no worry in the world. When you're racing, it's a different story. You're focused on winning. But the riding in the bike itself, I, mm. I miss it every day. Like, yeah. if I don't ride for a week, you know, I'm, I'm the worst person to deal Serious. with. Yeah, we can't go on holiday. Uh, myself and Amy, we can't go on holiday longer than three days uh, <laughs> yeah. without a bike because then we're in serious trouble. Yeah. Um, so how many bikes you got? Unfortunately, I only got one. Uh, the Vespa? Yeah, the Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, my whole entire career, I've owned, well, I didn't own it. My dad owned it. It was the first bike that he bought me when I was, I was really young. Yeah. And um, every other bike then was, was sponsored. You know, the uh -huh. first couple were sponsored by my uncle. Uh -huh. So he bought me a bike and then we sold it at the end of the year, gave him the money back. And then uh, up until now, you know, I, I've, I ride some of the most expensive race bikes that mm. you could ever buy around the world. Mm. But unfortunately, I don't own them a lot yeah, of people yeah. think i own so many bikes i don't own them yeah, yeah. and uh, i'll show you a picture of my vespa i own that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm like what's the longest distance that you've ever rode uh longest distance in one day or longest distance in all together like longest in in like one race or maybe in you know the dakar the dakar rally is crazy yeah, it's yeah. absolutely insane you do oh. anywhere between the the least amount in that race is ten thousand kilometers 10, in kilometers. 11 days 
or you can go up to 13,000 kilometers in 11 days. So uh -huh. you, it's, it's like, it's, yeah, so it's, it's exactly like riding from, it's Gabs to Mount every day for 11 days. Yeah. <laughs> for 11 days? Yeah. Damn. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So bro. it's exactly that, and and it's not like riding on the highway. <laughs> yeah, it's riding through the bush where you have no idea what's coming, and uh, obviously the elements are there. In Saudi, we've had snow, we've had rain, we've had uh, hailstorm, we've had everything uh, you can think of. Do you guys have maybe like uh, navigators along the way? No, we've no. got a navigator that uh, it's us. You know, on a bike we have everything on our bike. So we've got a road book. It's a it's a small piece of paper that you follow. Um, and you've just got to get to waypoints and you get a waypoint and then you know you're on the right track so you move on to the next one. Sometimes in, in Saudi, you know, it's such a, such a vast country. You don't see somebody for, I don't know, maybe 600 Ks. Mm. You don't see a single person. So yeah, it's, uh, it can get very lonely out there. How do you know that like the road is clear? You don't. You, you don't, don't know the, the road is clear. You don't know what's coming. Damn. You don't know the next 100 meters. Oh. So the only thing you know is the direction to go in from your roadmap. And sometimes if you get that wrong, then you're getting lost. Then, mm. you, stay, then you really don't know what's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you look at the roadmap, it's, uh, if you get everything right, you kind of know, okay, the, the next waypoint should be in 10 kilometers or yeah. the next waypoint should be in 100 meters or, oh. or something like that. And the, it'll show you a picture. Okay, you're staying on a road, uh, a dirt road until this point. Yeah. So you can kind of work it out that way. But uh, yeah, you've got nothing to help you there. And, and if you break down, you've got no mechanics. You're not allowed any help except in the evenings when you get to a place called the Bivouac, which is like a small little city. But um, yeah, that's, that's about all, all you've got. But it's a it's a really strenuous race, um, and it's a it's a mental a mental mind boggle. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, I lose ten to twelve kilos every time I race that race. <laughs> every time you race. every time I race that <laughs> race, <laughs> and uh, you know, mentally it's like so up and down. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, in case of breakdowns and all that, um, how do you get help? There's no help. Uh, you know, if you crash and you injure yourself. They've got a, a special system now that they've got on the bike that uh -huh. measures the G-force. Yeah. And if the G-force is really high, they'll send a helicopter to, oh. to come and pick you up. But once the helicopter comes, then you're out the race. And uh, uh -huh. my first Dakar, just to put it in perspective, my first Dakar cost us 1.1 million pula. Mm. And if you crash on day one and the helicopter comes, you've spent 1.1 1 million, 1 .1 million pula in one day. Mm. So, you know, that's Lost definitely it. not the goal. It's gone. You can't get it back. You can't get a discount. You can't get anything. So you never want to use that helicopter route unless it's really, really life-threatening. Mm -hmm. So you just do whatever you can to stay in the rally. You know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people ask about 2021. I had a, a big crash and the bike was was pretty broken. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't give up. You know, I sat there and I worked on the bike for four hours in the middle of the bush. And I eventually... Fixing it yourself. Yeah, yeah, trying to fix it myself. I eventually made a plan to fix the bike to get to the next bivouac that night. Oh. And I got there at 11 o'clock at night and uh, then my mechanics could work on the bike and do a proper job. And then the next day I was still in the race. Uh -huh. So yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's a big never give up game. That's yeah. for sure. But um, yeah. How do you mean by uh, spending 1.1 million bucks like in a race? Uh, like the preparations or you pay something to get in the race? Yeah, you have what? to pay. You oh, know, okay. uh, even now finishing second, second in the Dakar rally, I didn't, I didn't earn one puller from the race you know everything goes into the race the only way you earn money from from this type of racing is from sponsors that that personally back you um it cost us over a hundred thousand euros to enter the race to race because it's part of the the world championship series and it's the biggest and most difficult off-road race in the world mm. so everybody wants to do it mm. so if you don't want to do it mm. they don't care they just say okay hey listen you don't want to do it. There's another 7,000 mm. people that want to do it. Mm. And there's only space for 150 bikes. Mm. So if you don't want to do it, we'll fill your space up tomorrow. So you pay the money. This is the money you're going to pay. Okay, you do get a lot. You get food every night from the organization. Mm. And you get the helicopter service and, and medically attended if you need to, which is a huge thing for us. Mm. You know, you could die in seconds if you crash and you break a wrong bone. Um, so at least you've got that that um, that helicopter that's on standby waiting mm. for you. And they look after you that way and they track you and... And, and obviously, if you win the biggest race in the world, then you're going to have a lot of sponsors that want to be a part of your brand and they want to join you and they mm. want to be a part of you. So there's, there's, a, lot, there's, a, there's a lot of risk, yeah. you know? A million bucks, we could buy a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like um, the race doesn't pay you anything. Like even a podium finish, number one, number two. No, number a podium three, finish, we pay 100,000 euros to enter. Oh. A podium finish where I finish second now, I got 20,000 euros back. So you're still like 80,000 euros from the race. Yeah. Uh -huh. And so, then like you get... 
other or more money from the sponsors. You get some money from the sponsors, some, you know, uh-huh. that's how you got to try and live. And, um, you know, if you do well, the better you do, the better you can live. Mm-hmm. Um, but racing, we race now to race again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all you're trying to do is you're trying to earn enough money to go to the next race, to go yeah. to the next event, to try and do this, to try and do that, to try and reach your goals. I don't think we could say that our sport, unfortunately, you know, as, as, as hard as it is and as expensive as it is, you can't say that you could sit in my position now as a world champion and retire. Mm. There's absolutely no way. Yeah. You can sit in my position now as a world champion and say, okay, now we've got the recognition. Now we know that there's going to be people that will want to take us to the next round, to the next round, to the next round. They always mm. want to back you because you've got the number one plate. So, mm. you know, they, I don't think in, in my lifetime there will be enough money in, in the type of racing that I do to – to say, okay, I'm finished as an athlete, I'm finished mm-hmm. as a professional, I want to retire now. Yeah. I don't think that'll ever happen, but there is an opportunity now to to live my dreams, to mm-hmm. to reach my goals, yeah. to die one day with a legacy, like I said, and be like, okay, it doesn't matter. You know, for me, money's never been about, I've never raced for money, never mm-hmm. in my entire life, because yeah. I knew it was never possible. So yeah. yeah, but is the money good though? Like the money that you receive from your sponsor and all that? It's not good. It yeah, can we can live, uh-huh. but um, it's nowhere near putting away to 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 live for the rest of your life when you become an athlete. You know, yeah. uh, when you finish, so be- like it's not a million bucks. Or no, 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 <laughs> 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 no, no, it's yeah. not. Yeah. It's not that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, you're saying it's not a million bucks. No, no, it's not uh, a million bucks. Um, it's not even close to that. Uh-huh. Um, you know, like I said to you, you can you can live and we can live while we race. Yeah. Um, but as soon as we stop, we've got to make sure that we have another job lined up. You know, mm. so I'm at that point now. I'm I'm lucky enough just to, we've just signed a continuation contract with Hero Motorsports until DACA of 2027. Mm. So that gives us two in a little bit of years. Mm. So I've still got a, n- enough time to try and you know set up something for after racing. You know, and yeah. uh, hopefully my brand would have grown enough then to to try and do something like that. And obviously the main focus is to give back to the sport. Yeah. Um, I'm a big believer in that. We're from a country that has thousands of kilometers to go and ride your motorcycle Mm -hmm. why aren't we doing it Mm -hmm. you know we've got so many youth projects undergo Mm. but we don't have motorsport as one of them Mm. we've got motorsport the desert race used to bring in millions and millions of pool into our country we lost it Mm. why don't we have the future generation already preparing in go-karts preparing mm. in motorbikes mm. why why are we not you know supporting the youngsters and saying hey if you want to become a motocross world champion let's start working with you young you know i went overseas at 15 mm. you can't start racing at 15 mm. you can't start racing when you leave school so you know that's what i really want to start is is some youth projects but mm-hmm. unfortunately you know that's already it's really difficult it's a, a super expensive sport mm. everybody knows that and it's really you know there's there's not many people that want to you know go to bed at night with uh you know the feeling of oh i've borrowed money from this person to go racing Mm. you know i lived like that for two years after dakar Mm. and uh you know there's there's not too many people like that so Mm. i would like to start off small and 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 give back this the sport like that so after racing you know that's that's one of my my bucket list goals and um we're working towards that for sure yeah Um, yeah but yeah we'll see you know it's it's definitely like um, after racing when are you planning to you know, the with this sport, you 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 can only carry on racing as long as you're healthy. Yeah. Um, you know, you could end your career tomorrow with mm-hmm. a with a devastating crash or mm-hmm. something something small happening. So yeah. I can't give you a, a date. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it'll be stupid of me to tell you that I'm going to stop on this date because yeah. you know the universe might have something else planned. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would like to carry on racing as long as I possibly can. Yeah. You know, if I feel like the way I feel now in three years' time, I'll carry on going for sure. Yeah. As long as I never want to get onto a start line where I'm not giving it my all to go and win. Mm. Uh, you know, my sponsors put a lot of effort into me. They believe in me 100%. Yeah. There's that honesty where if I go to a sponsor and say, okay, guys, listen, I'm going to hang up the boots next year. Mm. They understand that it's going to be real. Um, mm. I, they know that I'm never going to go to them and say, oh, I'm going to race for another three years just mm. to try and keep on racing and keep the dream alive. There's yeah. there's no way. So as long as, as, long as um, I'm still as fit and healthy and, and still getting some some results then we're going to carry on racing but uh, I'm, I'm not in a position to give you a date yeah uh ross branch is in the building guys uh remember that we're shooting this episode from sakhar palm hospitality uh the best hotel in town man uh, how is the place ross it's amazing first yeah. time i've been here and yeah. well done yes oh, yeah? it looks yeah. amazing yeah it's great huh 
<laughs> yeah, like you should come here with Amy some. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely, we'll change uh, change one of our dinners to come here and, yeah. and uh, check it out. Uh, yeah. But it is a beautiful spot and first time I've seen it. So if you're visiting Gaborone, definitely pop in and, and give everybody a shout out and, and come and say hello. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for, yeah, yeah. for having us and, and putting us out there. Yeah, definitely. I um, remember that this uh, podcast episode and the whole of Overview Radio is proudly sponsored by Kanako Equipment, the best and most reliable commercial and industrial equipment supplier or store. Check them out on the socials whenever you want to buy anything for your business, either like from bakery equipment, butchery equipment, catering equipment. Um, yeah, like a lot, yeah, man. Uh, agriculture <laughs> equipment as well. Just everything, man. Medical equipment. Just whatever equipment that you're looking for. Like, just talk to Kanako Equipment on the socials. Gums the Barber is the nigga who does my hair. Ah, uh, Jack Jim uh, is our fitness partner and all that. Yeah, check them out, guys. Uh, Ross Branch. Um, yeah. Um, KTM is your... Uh, like, what's KTM? No, KTM was my, my previous employer, my like previous? Uh, previous manufacturer. I race for Hero Motorsports now, Indian brand. And uh, there is a Hero hero in Botswana, so check them out, Hero uh -huh. VW. Wait, and um, what is your team? like? Hero Motorsports. Like, that's your team? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like Formula One, like where? Exactly, oh, like Mer oh, okay. Mercedes versus Mercedes. Red Bull, you oh, know? Yeah. yeah. We're the Hero Monster Energy team, and, uh -huh. uh, you know, they, oh, okay. uh, they're the opposition. So yeah. go and check out here, uh, Hero Motors in, in Botswana and uh, yeah support them you know they also uh -huh. support the cause and and support us along the way so definitely go check them out uh -huh. so like um how many sponsors do you have all together i've got a couple you know um, there's how? there's yeah. uh, about seven eight of them mm -hmm. that uh, support me and um you yeah, are really grateful you know without them mm -hmm. none of this would be possible uh -huh. and uh, no racing would be possible that's for uh -huh. sure. can, like, can we be one of the sponsors <laughs> but can we be one of the sponsors yeah for sure we can definitely <laughs> talk about it you know? <laughs> uh, yeah so like what about Monster? Yeah, you know, I'm a partner with Monster and uh -huh. um, they also do a lot for me. Like I say, we've got a team deal, Hero uh -huh. Monster. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm really proud. It's, uh, you know, it's one of, those, one of those brands that you look up to from a young kid uh -huh. that you always yeah, want to be yeah. a part of, you know? Yeah. It's like, wow, oh, that's such a cool brand. I always yeah. want to be on that brand. Yeah, like and with the Monster Front. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. That's it. And, then, and yeah. Uh, yeah, so they look after me and uh, yeah, really proud of, of everything and, and how it's all going. So yeah. What about the, uh, um, like what about local companies and yeah, well, like the local corporate sector and the Botswana government and all that, um, have they been supportive towards you? Definitely, you know, uh -huh. um, it w I wouldn't have even gone to Dakar if it wasn't for everybody in Botswana. Tell us uh, about it. You know, I had to, like I told you, I had to raise 1.1 million Pula mm -hmm. the, first, the first year and then I went back and did it the second year. Yeah. I had to raise another 1.2 million Pula. So, oh. Um, yeah, you know, if you if you add up that sum of money, it's it's not just going to come from anywhere. Yeah. And uh, I've got a lot of supporters. You know, there's oh. there's so many people here that have supported me that have got me there. Um, the government has has always pushed and and supported me and and try to support me the best they possibly could. Mm. And um, yeah, to to all my my partners in Botswana that have still that have helped me get here and that continue to help me. You mm. know, um, I'm really grateful to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I I owe them my racing career you know mm -hmm. they they took a chance 2019 was a few well 2018 was a, a couple of dark dark months for me uh, mm -hmm. i didn't know where i was going which direction we were going in and uh, they all jumped together and uh, mm -hmm. not only the corporates and not only the businesses but there were so many individuals yeah, that got yeah. together and said let's back ross and uh, mm -hmm. let's do this fundraising event let's do that and mm -hmm. you know we even had the church making dinners for people and we had a lot of things on the go and uh, i owe it to everybody you know mm -hmm. there's too many people to mention to say thank you um, but but everybody that did support me, that helped me, everybody that came out, you know, we were, I think we were 20,000 Pula short the last night before I left for Dakar. And mm. uh, the only thing we did is we just phoned a couple of friends and said, hey, listen, it doesn't need to be big, but if you're willing to pay 500 bucks to put your name on my bike for Dakar, there, there, there's the opportunity. And I think we, we made the money that we needed in about 16 minutes. Mm, mm, so mm. it just shows that the support that we have in our country, we're a small population, you know, 2.2 million, 2.3 million and uh, to raise that kind of money for a sport that nobody knew what I was going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, nobody. Yeah. Nobody yeah. knew I was going to go there and win or nobody knew I was going to come there and lo come last, you know. Mm. So um, I'm really grateful and I think it just shows that the community we have and the bond that we have between each other is never ending. Mm. And I think... Um, 
you go back to the PPC, you know, I think our nation has been watered for many, many years and we'll always yeah. stick together. So, mm, yeah. yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, proud to to put that feather in my cap and, and proud to come home after that and show everybody like, hey, listen, you didn't waste your money on Ross Branch, you know, mm, it went mm, to a good mm. cause. It went to to giving me an opportunity to live the, the biggest dream that mm. a kid could ever live and, uh, you know, giving me an opportunity to put our beautiful country on the map. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. Do you feel appreciated enough? Yeah, you know, um, you know, appreciation is is not a monetary value. Mm, uh, mm, appreciation mm. is going to the spa, and and the lady that's helping you at the spa counter says, "Well done." That's mm. appreciation, and that shows the love of our country. And and uh, for sure, you know, yeah. uh, the appreciation I get, even when I'm overseas and I have a bad day, mm. you know, some uh, some other countries might just blow you off. Okay, you've you've come 15th today. That's that's not really where we want you to be. Mm. And here. Yeah, back home some people that don't even know about motorsports have sent me a message saying we've got your back we're supporting you you're flying the blue black and white and for me that appreciation is priceless that's uh that's worth millions and millions of pula on its own mm. you know so for sure i definitely feel appreciated and um you know the i try to get all the, to the, all the messages and replies and stuff like that just because i know what it means to everybody Channel. else but mm. yeah yeah um how true or false is that uh you were offered to like to race for like for South Africa <laughs> <laughs> is it true <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know it was um, it was true but uh, yeah. there was no doubt in my mind you know it's uh, uh, nah uh, this is home Sarah why yeah. did you turn it down because this is uh, this is where I eat this is home okay. this is I want to go back and, and have dinner at night knowing that my country gave me everything that I needed to go and do what I do best mm. And now it's time for me to give my country back what they gave to me. Interesting. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm not a guy that just, you know, just jumps ship because it's, uh, oh, no, maybe you might get a little bit more. Maybe you might get that. I, I'm not about that. I'm, I'm about the supporters, the yeah. people that believe in me. You know, there might be a handful of people in Botswana that don't believe in me, mm. but the rest of the country does. And I owe it to them. I owe yeah. it to our entire country to say thank you. Yeah. Thanks for believing in me. From the time I was four years old, the the people that I used to go to school with, they yeah. still phone me and support me. And, uh, you know, the, the big wheel turns. And uh, I know that whatever happens in the rest of my life, as long as I'm in this country, people will still look after me. Yeah. So I have no doubt in the world. And uh, that's why. That's, uh, you know, there's no, no other reason to say that this is home. I owe it to Botswana. Botswana has done me a, a million and one favors, and yeah, this is. And that's some insane. I'm sure 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 me nah, 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 nah. I'm sure 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 I'm Ah man, like that's some hey dude, like that's <laughs> real loyalty. Like, that's yeah. real loyalty. You know, it <laughs> takes me to this thing that we always have on the pod, like this conversation of if Ross should keep the land or he should like yeah. go out. <laughs> and my these guys they always say you should keep the land, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, you can keep the land now. <laughs> I know you can keep the land now. You Ross. can keep the land. <laughs> <laughs> Ross deserves the land. <laughs> Ross deserves the land, yes. <laughs> yeah, man. Um so Let's talk about your training now. Um, we were talking on the phone the other day, and you were in Namibia and all that. Yeah, um, tell us about that. Like um, your training, yeah. But the sport is really expensive. Look at how he has to go to Namibia to just train to train. And all that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he goes to Germany, like Bruh. just to train, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, tell us. Yeah, about you that. know, um, when you want to be against the best in the world, you've mm. got to train like the best in the world. Yeah. yeah. You know, some of those guys have a lot of money personally, and some of them have a lot of money that invested by by companies. Mm. So you, to keep up with them, you have got to be one step ahead of them. They mm. all fast riders. You yeah. know, there's 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 many people around the world that can win at what we do. Mm. Um, You've just got to make sure that you're one percent better than them, and I've I've maintained this since the time I started racing. Is if I can be one percent better than the next guy, then I'm gonna win. Mm. And the only way to do that is for me now. I've set a set a level at about twenty three or twenty four thousand kilometers a year of training. Mm. So as long as I get that in and I'm learning every training, then I know that I'm gonna be one percent better. Um, some of my biggest competitors, they do about 10,000, 11,000 Ks in a year. Mm. So I know I'm doing double them. So 
that one percent must come into play somewhere. Exactly. And yeah, true, so true. you know, I'll take that extra ten thousand k's any day. So yeah, I travel a lot, but mm. I know that it doesn't last forever. I spend mm. a lot of money on traveling for sure. Mm. I've got some great partners uh, that that help me travel, and um, you know, I just want to go there and give the best I possibly can. I just want to go to the race, whatever race it may be, big mm. or small, and give one hundred and ten percent. I never want to go there and give fifty percent and have a regret that I could have done a little bit more and mm. could have done a little bit of this or a little bit of that. So yeah, training is a huge part of my life yeah. and um, mm. probably the most expensive part of racing. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. You know, you've got to. I want to be the best and prove this year. You know, if we look at our results last year to what we've got this year, yeah. it's all because of that extra 10,000 kilometers mm. that I'm putting on a clock. Mm. And um, I think that that's, you know, that's the way to do it. And yeah. that's, uh, I'm a full believer in that. You know, everybody's like, oh, maybe you're overtraining, maybe you're doing it too much. Then I said, okay, well, let's see. And the mm. result came out. I came second at Dakar the year before I finished 21st. Mm. Um, you know, the year before, last year I finished fifth or fourth or fifth in the mm. championship. Now I, f now I win it. So mm. yeah, it shows. Yeah. When Namibia do you train? I train all over the place, you know, from uh -huh. north to south, east to west. I train uh -huh. everywhere. Oh, okay. uh, you know, when you're doing that kind of kilometers, it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, a, tra a pure training day for me in, in at home, I ride from Pakalani, I ride all the way to Juaneng. I do a 300 kilometer loop from around Juaneng uh -huh. and I ride back to Pakalani in the same day. So we're same doing day. about 700 k's uh -huh. in a day. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Route? I go through from um, Pakalani, I go across to uh, Molepololi, and then from uh -huh. Maleps, oh, I take way. the. Yeah, yeah the power lines all the way to Juaneng uh -huh. and then I do the desert race routes that we used to do uh -huh. so I race around those and then I come back to Juaneng and then I refill and then I come back to Pakalani the same way hey bro like I'd like yeah. to do that though <laughs> <laughs> I would like to, like to that, experience bro. that <laughs> I'd like, I'd like I'll to take you with that. me one day yeah you should <laughs> <laughs> you should bro so um, why do you choose uh, like besides Botswana um, like, why do you choose Namibia to train uh, so okay. my first time in Saudi Arabia you know I've been lucky enough to do a Dakar in South America mm -hmm. and in Saudi Arabia so I've been able to test out a lot of different terrain mm. um, so I try and make the best of, of a situation where I want to put everything together mm. so I look at uh, I'll look at the training that we have in Botswana then mm. I'll look at the training we have in Namibia and then I'll go over and race a Dakar and I'll say mm. okay we need to put these two and this, this together and then we've actually got a guy that uh, he's called our map man and mm -hmm. he just goes and marks out routes so I don't know where we're going mm -hmm. and he'll give it to me on our road book on our navigation and say okay this day you do this one this day you do this one um, so yeah it's uh, it's the best of both worlds you know we've got Botswana that's got the exactly like desert racing stuff that we need mm -hmm. because half of the Dakar is like that yeah. and then uh, Namibia's got the other half so mm -hmm. you know I don't really need to travel some guys that live in Europe, they need to fly to Dubai or they need mm -hmm. to fly to Morocco to get that mm -hmm. that um, terrain and that same experience. Whereas I can go from Botswana to Namibia and mm -hmm. I'll get everything. I can get a whole DACA in. So, yeah, yeah that's... Um, it's like it's in your backyard. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got it right here. That's why I'm saying the youth of our, of our country is so important at this point because we have everything we need to go for it, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, especially like the, the duties, the, the cosmoses that are racing now and, and all the youngsters that are coming up, you know, there's... Mm -hmm. uh, you and he's doing an amazing job just won a championship so there's so many youngsters that i'm trying to push into the side of the sport because mm. that's the future of our sport but yeah. um yeah we've got a whole training yard in our in mm. our backyard um how does uh how does terrain ever like that you've been on definitely saudi arabia saudi you know arabia. it changes you mm. get um you know the only difference between us and saudi is mm. that we get four types of weather on a daily basis uh -huh. you know you have snow wind heat rain you have everything on a different day because you travel so much different parts of the country you get the the freezing colds you get the 40 degrees you get uh -huh, everything so yeah. i think that's the main difference so i'd say saudi is definitely the toughest terrain uh, on the bike and the uh -huh. body yeah the best terrain to definitely botswana right on botswana, botswana. yeah yeah 100 oh, okay. i'll do a desert race here any day yeah any day, yeah. Any day. Okay, any day. i've it. done yeah, done yeah. eight eight desert races and i've won eight of them so yeah, i'll, yeah, I'll yeah, do yeah, that yeah. on any day yeah yeah um, what about the, um, like, what do you call it? Um, let's talk about, like, your championship now. Um, what is it called again? It's the World Rally Raid Championship. World, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how does it differ from uh, Dakar Rally? Yeah, so, uh, basically, it's the same thing. You know, uh -huh. Dakar Rally is round one. 
And then round uh-huh. two goes to Abu Dhabi. It's the same race. The only difference between the, the Dakar and the rest of the rounds is Dakar goes up to 12,000 kilometers uh-huh. and the rest of the rounds only go 5,000 kilometers. And it's half the distance and half the, the time. So we, it's only a five-day race, uh-huh. uh, a normal world championship, and Dakar is 11 days. Uh-huh. So that's, that's the biggest difference. But Dakar is round one, uh-huh. and then we have another four rounds after that. So uh-huh. Yeah, so like they see um, you're the first ever... Motswana to win a round, yeah, something like that. Um, how do you explain that? Yeah, I'm the first African to win yeah. a, a world championship of in this facet of the sport, and mm. uh, you know, first Motswana, that's for sure to to win a so like you're a the world first championship. African. Yeah, first African to to win a world championship. Come on, <laughs> come on, Rose. It wasn't yeah. like I didn't have pressure, you know. Yeah. Uh, Litsile just got the gold at yeah, Olympics, yeah. so I was kind of motivation. Uh, yeah, motivation, you yeah. know. So so and and funny enough, you know, it was you know the the main op- position for Letile was an American and uh, going into the last round it yeah, was no uh, else, yeah. it was only me and uh, an American that so could have won ah, so it was man. Botswana versus America both <laughs> yeah, times <come> on. <laughs> and then we won <laughs> both times <laughs> shout out to you man. shout out to you bro. shout out to you thank you, you. Um, so lastly now let's talk about um, okay like there's this now I mean like uh, with this new government thing you know um, there's this for year now, you know, yeah, like the political for year, the new government for year, the Duma Boko for year, and all that. Yeah, um, did you vote this year? <laughs> Unfortunately, I wasn't around for registration. You know, I tried oh. to make a plan, and uh-huh. uh, that's one thing that I really hope that we can then look into the future is that uh, yeah. any athletes away that they could maybe register at a different time. Um, I was away racing, and also like the they wouldn't make a provision for that. No, no, unfortunately oh, not. Yeah. You know, I, I tried for that uh, because I really, really value it, and uh, it's really close to my heart, and. Uh, you know, um, I'm just happy, like I said before, the peaceful handover to mm. me just showed how lucky we are. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, um, I know everybody wants the best Botswana that we can possibly have and yeah. uh, I want the best Botswana we can possibly have. Yeah. I'm here to promote the country. I'm here to be an ambassador for our country. Yeah. I want to fly the flag high. Um, and I know that the, everybody here respects that. They can see that I'm so passionate and, you know, this is our country. Uh, I don't believe in anything else. There's no other way, you know. It's uh, I'll die here for sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be an old man walking around here. So you know, obviously, it's it's really important to me to where the future goes. And mm. uh, you know, I'm definitely not in politics. I don't get involved in politics. Yeah. I just hope and pray for the best Botswana that we can possibly be. Yeah. And the first step of that was the peaceful handover yeah. and uh, just seeing the whole country witness that and the whole world you know yeah. we're being spoken about everywhere I, at the time i was at a race and uh, everybody was speaking about wow how peaceful is botswana you know yeah, that's yeah, like yeah. unheard of in african countries yeah. and it was it was incredible so yeah, yeah. yeah whatever happens happens and yeah. um, you know i'm still gonna go and fly the flag today tomorrow yesterday yeah. next year i'm still gonna yeah. go fly it and give the best i possibly can yeah red or blue <laughs> you know, I'm just supporting the everyone that wants to, wants the country to win. We all want to win as yeah. uh, as a country, so yeah, we're gonna yeah. go for it. And uh, you know, and I, uh, yeah, like I say, I'm a I'm a proud Motswana, and yeah. I just want to fly that flag as high as I possibly can. Yeah. Um. Given a chance, um, what are the things? Uh, let's say um, um, you are appointed maybe like your yeah, minister of sports tomorrow and all that. Um, what are the things that you would change or work on? Uh, like in our country? Definitely starting uh, sports at a young age. Mm. You know, I think, um, you know, old school w- sports used to be a game, no mm. matter which country in the world you were in. Yeah. Sports always used to just be a game and we used to do sport for fun. And uh, it doesn't matter what sport it is now. I think we've proven as a country, as a nation now, that we've got so many talented athletes. Mm. You look at the Nigel Amos, the yeah. Macquales, the everybody, you know, uh, there's, there's so many talented athletes here mm. and we've got so many you know there's 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 a talented athlete living next door to us yeah, yeah, each yeah. one of us has a talented athlete so yeah. for us now i would say that we need to start focusing in, in sports in schools School you know? sports, yeah, and yeah. say to you know i wasn't academically blessed mm-hmm. that's for sure you know yeah. i was really bad at school mm-hmm. and um i was really good in sports you mm-hmm. know not only motorsport but i was also okay in cricket and stuff but we didn't have the opportunity to try and showcase that mm-hmm. and uh i I still work lo- uh, closely with a lot of principals like, uh, you know, Mr. Ivor 
Greaves at, at Thornhill. I still work with him really closely and try and mm. give him my valued import of sports. And he's also a sportsman, so he values it really, really highly. And, uh, you know, we've got a young cricket team that I follow really closely from Thornhill that goes mm. away and they go to a little club and they've got their club cricket that they're doing. And I can guarantee you that we're going to have a, a world-class cricket player come out of there. Mm. And, uh, you know, we need to do the same with football. We need to do the same with everything that we have you know there's there's fencing i've been mm. working with the fencing guys and i've been to one fencing, of their shows you mean, yeah, yeah yeah fencing yeah, athletic sport. sports yeah, yeah. we're gonna have athletes that are going over to olympics for fencing we've mm. got boxing you know we're good at so many sports but unfortunately our whole country learns those sports too late mm -hmm. you know we need to get involved i started riding at three years old mm. i became world champion at 38. Mm. what happens if i started riding at 10 years old that's seven years later i'm mm. way past the threshold of winning a championship at mm. 45 years old you know mm. so mm. i think if we start learning and, and teaching kids at a young age that sports is possible to to make a living to do you know we've got a rugby side that's over in morocco at the mm, moment yeah. nobody knows about it like i don't know about it <laughs> yeah you know so yeah. we need to start pushing that and i've noticed now um you know the botswana national sports commission has started pro promoting it and punting it on the socials mm. which is amazing you know yeah. that's exactly what we need so i i really think now that um and i would really like to meet our new minister of sports and mm. and try and help where i can you know mm. and and, and just say, hey, let's get into this. Let's get into that. Let's let's start pushing the youngsters. Um, yeah. You know, where can we bring our athletes? You know, mm. we don't want to lose athletes to America. We don't want to lose athletes to to any worldwide countries where they're paying a lot of money and they they are going to take all their knowledge and their skills somewhere else. We need them to keep it here in Botswana. And that's what mm. I love about Letsile, Nigel, Isaac. You know, they all here. They want to give back. Mm. Let's use them as much as we possibly can, mm. and let's get the next generation going. We're not going to last forever. We yeah. very we we all you know we we all toppies we're gonna be we're gonna yeah. be retiring soon and we yeah. need somebody to fill those shoes and take the mm. next step yeah everything that you just said now uh do you think it's all achievable in Botswana? 100 percent, without a doubt we've got everything we've need we've got a community that'll back any sportsman that goes anywhere in the world mm. um let's see let's just open doors worldwide for every single athletics athletes in this country mm. i've opened doors now for motorsport you mm. know uh what happens with especially with motorsport i'm not sure with athletics but motorsport as soon as you get a good result worldwide mm. people start looking at the flag and the nation and saying okay if he's from there there must be more mm. let's go look at people from there let's go and find more talent there and then mm. you know as a as a worldwide brand like hero motorcycles if you bring somebody from botswana botswana is an extremely small country not many people know about it and you produce a world champion with that guy mm. it blows it out of the water mm. your media your marketing goes it's worth millions mm. so you know now is the opportunity to say okay hey let's let's focus on our sports as mm. as the youth of the nation and uh you know um i really hope that we can we can go that way and I, I really think that we have the right people in place now to make those decisions to to grow athletics as sports, soccer, cricket, mm. rugby. Mm. We've got we've got so many sports here and we just need to take advantage of that and run with it. You mm -hmm. know, we're very we're a very talented nation. Yeah. Um having traveled to almost parts of the world, uh, do you think that we we sell our country enough? Uh, that's a difficult one, you know. Mm -hmm. Us as athletes, uh, me personally I sell our country mm -hmm. To, to the ends of the earth. You yeah. know, I tell everybody about Doka Vanga Delta. I tell mm. everyone about the Kalahari Desert. I tell everybody about which city does what. I tell everyone about our diamond mines. Mm. I tell everybody as much as I possibly can and, and that we, you know, we can... People are talking about overpopulated world, but mm. you drive from... Juaneng to Khansi, you don't see anybody, you know? So I've told people about that and I try sell it as much as I can. I think if we had to, as athletes, you know, work with our tourism industry a little mm. bit more, I think yeah, we'd yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to True. probably promote True. that a little bit more. Mm. You know, if, if we bring a, a couple of people from from our tourism side to to one of our races, just one a year, and, yeah. and they do an expo or they do a, you know, a pamphlet giveaway at one of our races, it'll, mm. it'll explode our country a, a lot more. But... Uh, Botswana is a growing nation, and I, I've always been proud to say that, that we're probably one of the fastest growing nations in the world when it comes to we doing everything we can to get better. Mm. We're not moving backwards yeah, in life. True, we, true, we're true. all moving forwards. Uh, it might be a little bit slow in some places, but mm. it's moving forward. Yeah. So I really think that um, in the next couple of years, we're going to definitely have uh, you know that, that exposure from 
let's see they're going to win a race. Nigel Amos giving a coaching academy. Mm. Isaac McQuala, I see he's coaching kids as well. Mm. You know, we're going to have that exposure and we're going to yeah. have that as a seven o'clock show saying, hey, did you see what this guy's doing for these kids? Or did you see what this girl's doing for those kids? Are you yeah. seeing, yeah. you know, all this kind of athletes giving back and, yeah. and um, we'll, you know, I went on a show with BBC last week and, and that's been shown to the entire world mm. and uh you know all our visuals were of botswana and yeah, it was yeah. visuals of me flying the airplane in in the okavango delta and then mm. it was the visuals of me racing in kazakhstan so yeah. two completely different sides of the world but yeah. uh just documenting where we're from and and yeah. how we grew up yeah um we've seen how you went out to go and support the uh like the uh the olympic team yeah when they arrived from the olympics and all that that was super awesome of you man <laughs> You know what? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That's when he took the lens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we like we all athletes. We all uh, we all strive for the same thing, and that's to yeah. put Botswana on the top. And they did it. Yeah. They did it. Super proud. I can't say that I wasn't crying the day that the you know the the relay team got their medals. That Latile won their gold. I was crying that whole entire day Serious. because I was so proud, you know, yeah, it's yeah. just like, I also want to be that. I want to give back to the nation. Um, you know, a very common saying, and I'm sure you've heard it from the Springbok rugby team, is that sports brings a nation together. Yeah. And I think if we all look at what Letile did for us, yeah. and um, he brought the nation together. Mm. I don't think we've ever filled the filled the stadium for our Olympics team, you know? No, never, never, ever. And never. now is the first time in history we've done that. And not yeah. only the stadium. I was at the airport and... Uh, yeah. There were hundreds of thousands of people, so mm. I'm really grateful. And uh, I take my hat off to all the supporters in Botswana mm. because they they are what makes us. Mm. You know, they the guys that will the guys girls mm. um, that will be there to say well done, and that'll arrive at the airport and mm. and rev their bikes and and clap and sing and dance and mm. make us feel truly welcome. So mm. I take my hats off to all the supporters, and uh, yeah, quite a good future. I'm um, obviously different reception to when you won the like the world championship um what did you take on that yeah you know i don't uh, i don't do it for reception definitely mm. not um yeah. i st i i put the stamp in the book that we've got botswana on the map mm. we you know the i've never cried so much when i played the national anthem that night that i won um mm. they played our national anthem and i was in absolute tears mm. and coming back it doesn't matter about the reception you know mm. everybody was really happy with us and uh yeah, I'm not about a reception. I'm just about everybody's happy. Yes. Yeah. We didn't let anyone down. No, we mm. did the good job. Yes. Great. That's mm. what we're about. Yeah. Let's focus on the next goal. Um, everybody here is super happy to see me. And, and like I say, even this morning going into a shop, um, the lady was so happy to see me and asked for a picture. And that means the world to me. Awesome. So. Awesome. Chief Ghost, anything that you'd like to... Uh, Ross, one has to go, us. man. One yeah. has to go. I have a list for you here, man. <laughs> no one problem. has to go. <laughs> no problem. Ronaldo or Messi? <laughs> Uh, Messi. Messi has to go. <laughs> no. Messi. Ronaldo I'll choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Ronaldo has to go. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. 100%. Come on, yeah. Hamilton or Schumacher, one has to go. Uh, Hamilton has to go. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, the Springboks or the Vultures, one has to go. Oh, <laughs> the Springboks have to go. <laughs> 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 oh, yes. yeah. I, I, three more Dakar Riley or the Toyota Desert Race one has to Ooh, go Ooh, that's a that's a tough one yeah. I can't choose one there 100% they're very close one, to man. my heart I choose one um uh, uh, I don't know <laughs> you know racing in front of your home fans there's no feeling like it so yeah. I'll say they both stay for now oh yeah <laughs> yeah but like Dakar Riley goes yeah. yeah yeah like we understand yeah, <laughs> yeah. R&B be your hip hop uh, hip hop has to go. Right. Hip hop has to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the last one, Boko or Masisi. Yo, no, no, no. I'm not involved in, in politics. <laughs> hey, like, one has went to already. <laughs> one has gone away. <laughs> yeah. Yo, Ross, shout out, man. Thank you so much for coming to the podcast, man. Yeah, no, yeah, it's we, a pleasure. Thank you, guys, yeah, and uh, to to all your fans and supporters and yeah, all your yeah. partners. Thanks for being involved. Yeah, so yeah, awesome yeah. to see you guys uh, taking the initiative to get involved with our our local sportsmen and sportswomen and uh, keep flying the flag for us and keep yeah, getting yeah, us yeah, out yeah. there. Thank Obviously, it's, it's huge for us when you guys do document our stories. And uh, thanks for having me. I, I'm really late, but thanks yeah, for having yeah. me. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Ross. Um, you know, uh, we usually like do this to appreciate guys like you and all that. I mean, like you, uh, I mean, you're you doing an amazing job, man. And 
we appreciate you a lot. I mean, like me being a Motswana and like everyone else and like to have guys like you being our ambassadors out there and all that, you know, like it goes a long way. Thank yeah, you. And like we appreciate that big time. Thank you very okay. much. Thank yeah, you guys. Man. What kind of music do you listen to? Everything and anything. I've got so many different playlists. When you ride 12,000 kilometers through the, des through the desert, mm. everything comes up. <laughs> uh -huh. Like any local artist that you... No, no, to? I listen to everything. You oh, know, okay. local, international, I've got everything. I've uh -huh. got playlists from yeah. kilometers of, of playlists. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like any local food that you like? Food? Yeah. Seswa pub for the win. What? Seswa. Oh, Seswa. Yeah. And pub. Yeah, oh, for okay. the win. Every time I'm home... That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Morocco. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Rose Branch. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, my brother. To the overviewers, thank you so much for tuning in, man. I mean, of all the places that you could have been, you choose to be here with us. And that means a lot. Remember to subscribe, man. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. And follow Kanako Equipment, guys. Huh? Don't follow me. Follow Overview Radio and follow Kanako Equipment on social media. Follow Ross Branch as well, <laughs> right? Yeah, across all social media platforms. And this is how we sound out, baby. With a brrrr. Yeah. The station is now the ultimate power in the universe.